is your Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, February the 27th, 2019. Today in A.D. 272, Flavius Valerius Aurelius Constantius Augustus, a.k.a. Constantine the Great, was born in the ancient Roman Empire. His dad, Constantius, was a major player under the Emperor Diocletian and ultimately became Augustus of the West, the number two man in the Roman Empire at its height. The way Diocletian set it up was that the Roman Empire had an East and a West top man called Augustus and a number two man called Caesar. The senior Augustus of the two was the number one man in the Roman Empire and the junior Augustus was the number two and then the two Caesars shared the number three spot and everything else flowed from that. And so when Constantius died, his son was already Caesar of the West. And so the logical choice to step into the role of Junior Augustus was Constantine. But he was in Britannia, modern day England, which was a long way from Rome, where plenty of other folks thought that they had a good claim to become Augustus of the West. It took him a few years, but Constantine knocked out his competitors. And then, unexpectedly, he wiped out Maxentius, the Augustus of the East, and dissolved that whole East-West thing. He declared himself the sole Augustus, the sole emperor of the Roman Empire, and he set to work making things the way that he wanted them to be. And it was during these battles, while he was trying to make himself sole emperor, that he fought the Battle of the Milvian Bridge. And it was in preparation for that battle that Constantine claimed to have been given a divine vision where Jesus appeared to him. And depending on which account you read, the Lord either told him to paint a cross on the shields of his army and revealed to him that in oak senio, I-H-S, in this sign he would conquer. Other accounts, though, say that the symbol was not a cross, but the Cairo, which looks like the Roman letter P sitting on top of a Roman letter X, even though in fact they're Greek letters, the first two letters of the word Christ. Of course, IHS are the first three letters of the name Jesus in Greek, if you look at them in capitals. And so you've got a good thing going either way. Constantine would go on to legalize Christianity and to be baptized himself, albeit on his deathbed. He also funded his mother's travel and research to the Holy Lands where she was able to connect with Christians there who had been protecting various relics from the life of Jesus. She brought back numerous relics and enshrined them in churches and chapels all over Rome, which Constantine funded throughout his life. Today is the birthday in 1886 of Hugo Black, the U.S. Senator who would go on to become Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Black is a bit of a mixed bag. He advocated for civil rights, especially in terms of voting rights, due process, and equal protection. He was absolutely pro-First Amendment, pro-Bill of Rights, and he was a strict constructionist. But he basically created the legal foundation for today's judicial activism and what has been called legislating from the bench. Without Black, there is no Roe versus Wade. There's no Obervel versus Hodge. What's more, it would seem that Justice Black experienced a kind of non-religious conversion when he moved from the Capitol building down the way to the Supreme Court. He was active in the KKK even as a senator and gave frequent anti-Catholic speeches. But just a few years later as a justice, he hired a Catholic woman as his secretary and he hired Mr. Leon Smallwood, a black and a Catholic, as a personal page and messenger. Whatever the case, he died in 1971, an icon of liberal jurisprudence. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.